Sputnik was tough in a wrestling context in that he would take the hard ways and he would take the bumps and nothing was going to fucking prevent Sputnik Monroe from trying to steal the show and have the match of the night. But as far as probably as uh, he, he was a tough, he, he fought when he was young in the carnivals and he got in that way. As far as wrestling, he probably couldn't have tied a knot, much less tied up anybody into a knot, but he had that personality. And so as far as, as actual wrestling was concerned, no, he was not going to give Danny Hodge any runs for his money. As far as just being a tough old crusty bastard that, that fought and wrestled in carnivals and took on all comers and, and was a guy who, if it needed a hard way, was, was, you know, was right there for it. Yeah, he was a tough son of a gun. But Sputnik was was more uh, <laughs> when you met Sputnik Monroe he he would shake your hand he'd say how you doing nice to meet you Sputnik Monroe world's greatest wrestler Sputnik Ra- Monroe the diamond ring and Cadillac man there is an entire chapter in uh, in my book that I sent you rags paper and pens yep. available at jimcornett.com about Sputnik Monroe he still holds legendary status in Memphis his boots and robe are on display at the Memphis Rock and Soul Museum uh, not only because he still to this day, despite Jerry Lawler breaking the uh, consecutive sellout record in the Mid-South Coliseum that Elvis Presley set, despite wow. Lawler being the king of wrestling in Memphis, still to this day, the most people ever to see a wrestling match in the city of Memphis, Tennessee, came to see Sputnik Monroe in his match with Billy Wicks at Russwood Park in 1959. His program with Billy Wicks, the hometown hero, was so hot, and that's when they first got Memphis TV, the the Memphis TV that's recognized as the lineage up to the to the glory days. Um, it was so hot they were doing ballpark shows uh, in the summertime on a regular basis to handle the people, and they sold out at thirteen thousand some. But so many other people were trying to get in that they broke the outfield fences down, and the police and newspaper estimates were all, over seventeen, almost eighteen thousand people in the park to see the the blow-off match between Sputnik Monroe and Billy Wicks. And Sputnik also is credited, and with very good reason, for integrating uh, sporting events in the South. Because back in those days, Memphis was was subject to segregation. Uh, In the Ellis Auditorium, the black fans had to sit in what they called, and this is the reason why it became known that, the Crow's Nest. Right. Um, and, and, you know, Memphis wrestling was going through a down period when Sputnik came in and the crowds were down and Sputnik instantly realized that there was a massive audience that was not being tapped. And so what would he do? He put on his purple suit and his felt hats and his, his diamond tipped cane. And he went down to Beale street and he was arrested for drinking in the Negro cafes. That's what they called them at the time because Beale Street was completely black. Right. It wasn't a tourist attraction like it is today. And they called them Negro cafes. And the cops would go in and arrest him. And his crime was drinking with black people. And so that he would do that and he would get arrested. He was the first white man in the city of Memphis's history to go to court and be represented by a black attorney. Um, they arrested him on charges of mopery, which is an old Southern vagrancy term. Wow. And he would defend him. He had the black attorney to defend him, and he would pay a fine, and it would make the newspapers. So eventually, the black citizens in Memphis said, you know, we don't care if he's a heel. We love this guy. He's, he, he, he loves us, and we love him. And so it got to the point where the downstairs, ringside and downstairs, would be half full if that, but they'd be turning them away. Yeah. from the crow's nest and the smart money says that roy welch the promoter had something to do with this but he let the heel take the fall but regardless of how a good thing got done they ended up segreg- uh, desegregating memphis wrestling to where that the black folks and the white folks could sit in the same locations and they didn't have any riots and as a result of that it spread to the other sports so sputnik oh, Monroe, for damn. all of those contributions is commemorated in the memphis rock and soul museum as as for his part in not only 
being a cultural icon in Memphis, but also desegregating sporting events in, in West Tennessee. Oh. And one more Sputnik story. You're going to love this. Oh, Greg, go for it. After he'd drawn the biggest record crowd in the history of Memphis wrestling and after he had, had boxed Jersey Joe Walcott and after he'd wrestled a bear, he said, what else can I do to get some publicity? <laughs> so Sputnik's hometown was Dodge City, Kansas. And that's how he was introduced. And at the time, in 1959, 1960, one of the big hit Western shows on TV was Bat Masterson. And Gene Barry, the actor, played Bat Masterson, who was allegedly the sheriff of Dodge City, Kansas, in the the program. So Sputnik got the idea that since Gene Barry was going to make an appearance at the Mid-South Fair and Rodeo that year, that he would go to the Mid-South Fair and Rodeo. He would go up on stage, crash the party, and and punch Gene Barry in the nose and and get on the front page of the paper. Well, he he went, and and, and of course, now some people say alcohol was involved. Right. But he went to the the Mid-South Fair and Rodeo, and there was such a a jam-packed crowd, and there was such security, he couldn't get anywhere near Gene Barry. But... In the process of being there, he somehow made the wrong remark to this cowboy from up in Paris, Tennessee, that was there for the rodeo. And once again, the stories differ, and alcohol was involved, but apparently the cowboy decked Sputnik anywhere from one to nine times. Now, <laughs> and this story is in my book also, because it was in the it was covered in the newspapers at the time. The next day, the newspapers had pictures of Sputnik with this big bloused eye and, and the stitches, Sputnik runs afoul of cowboy at fair, you know, decked nine times or whatever. <laughs> now, Sputnik's story was that he he got in a fight with this guy because he said the wrong thing about either a horse or a woman. We're not sure what. And while he was handing off his brand-new Hamburg hat, the guy sucker punched him, and then he slipped in horse manure trying to get up, and the guy hit him again. But regardless... Sputnik Monroe, the top heel in, in wrestling, got beat up by some unknown cowboy. So Roy Welch oh. and his son, Buddy Fuller, who was the matchmaker, trying to make a positive out of a negative, challenged the cowboy to come down to the Ellis Auditorium that following Monday night, and they'd pay him $1,500 if he'd get in the ring with Sputnik again. Well, now the cowboy figured, I'm being set up. This whole thing has been a work. I'm being set up. They're going to kill me. So he didn't show up. <laughs> <laughs> so Sputnik and the Cowboy sold out the Ellis Auditorium for a match that was never going to happen to begin with, and they brought somebody else in that they said was from Paris, Tennessee, that was a friend of the Cowboys, and Sputnik beat him and got all his heat back. <laughs> and at the time, oh, Jesus Christ. commercial appeal on a daily basis because everybody in town, you can go back to that period of time, the late 50s, early 60s, and Sputnik's gimmick was – he had a, a bleached blonde spot in the front of his hair. Yep. You can go back in high school yearbooks and and at that time and a lot of the guys in, in like eleventh, twelfth grade had bleached blonde spots in, in the in the front of their head because Sputnik was their hero. He was the hero of the, the teenage guys yep. and, and and all of the, the the black fans. And he used to say, he said the, the white people may not like me. And the establishment may not like me, but all those people, their black maid that's raising their kids, they love me. So I've got the kids, and I got the blacks, and that's all I need. I'll be damned. And to this day, if you mention the name Sputnik Monroe in Memphis, you know, second only to Jerry Lawler, you're, you will instantly, everybody knows who you're talking about. 